What's up guys? It's Missy. I am back with another SimCity Build-A-Video and today we're going to talk about two very important things when it comes to the contest of mayors and that is how to finish your tasks on time and the secret to picking your tasks. Okay, so these are two very, very, very important topics. Now, I've been thinking about this for, well, forever, but I've been thinking about this really, you know, a lot lately and it's been in this video was kind of inspired by the latest people that I'm training for the contest. So I've got two people right now that are in comm training. And one of them is struggling very, very hard. Okay. But she reminds me a lot of somebody that I've had in the past. And what, what was interesting is her struggle, the same exact struggle is the struggle that this person had in the past. So it was, it was very familiar to me. And then I realized after really thinking on it that a lot of people struggle in the same way that she does. In fact, almost everybody starts off struggling in the same way. And so I started to think about, you know, what, what is it that she's doing wrong here? Because whatever it is that she's doing wrong, a lot of you guys are doing the same thing she's doing. Maybe not as much or maybe not as frequently or whatever, but you guys are all doing it, really. Almost everybody does it. Now, first thing is getting the assignments done on time, okay? I cannot explain how important this is. It's, it, they're both very crucial. It is very, very, very crucial that you pick the right task at the right pace, okay? So what I'm noticing is that people are able to run a 2K average, but they're like three days into the contest and they've only done 18 assignments. That's just simply not good enough, right? And that's unfortunate because most of the time, these are the people that care the most to win. They're the ones that want to learn and that's why they're taking their time. Unfortunately, you can't take time, okay? And this is where the contest of mayors comes in play where it's, it takes up your whole week. This is where I say, when you wanna win, you gotta be on it. You gotta be dedicated. You got to be setting timers on your phone. You gotta be on the game. You gotta be checking your, your shops. They all need to be prepped at all times, okay? So I, I pay very close attention to the people that are in comm training because this is now, now you're on my time, okay? Now I'm, my, I'm training you, okay? So now if you signed up for comm training, it's like army boot camp for SimCity, you know? I have a lot of messages that I have to get to and a lot of people that I help. If I'm wasting time on somebody who doesn't really want it, then I'm not helping somebody else, right? So first make sure you have the time to, before you sign up for comm training. That's number one. But more importantly, that you have the ambition and the want. Both of the people that I'm training right now have that ambition. They want to win. They, they're just, they're having a hard time getting the right balance. Okay. So I start to think about it and I noticed that this one person that I'm training is more concerned about the points value than anything else. Every single time that she has sent in her screenshots. Okay. So she's, here's how calm training works. You send a screenshot of your entire list. Now, I shouldn't have to constantly say, what's your choice? What's your choice? You should say, this is what I think I should do. Okay, great. Then I can read that and I could say, okay, yes, that is correct. Or no, that is not correct. This is the correct choice and why this is the correct choice. Now, normally when people don't really want to learn, they don't really care why it's not the correct choice. They just want the answer. That shows me that they're not wanting to learn. When you don't ask questions, it's because you don't care for the answer, right? You only ask questions you want the answers to. If you're having a hard time and you're, all you care about is the right choice, how are you ever gonna learn? You have to want to know the process. And the problem is, is that when she was sending in her assignments, she's sending her assignments in and I notice a very big pattern with her. I would ask her, when, whenever her choice was wrong, I would say, okay, why did you pick that? And every single time, her answer would be something to the effect of, 
it's the highest points value or I want bigger points. Oh, and then I, you know, I open up the game and I see her talking about how she hasn't had any task over 1950. Why that's important, I don't know. Because I'm looking at her score going, well, you've got a 2K average right now. She, she was, at that time, she, I believe she was 200 points short, barely, of a 2K average. Which is excellent considering how many tasks uh, she had canceled. I believe she had canceled two, which, like I said, I mean, just canceling one puts you down 2,000 points. So if all of her tasks haven't been over 1950, that's not possible, right? Now, the point is, though, is people focus too much on the fact that they want a high-valued task, okay? They, they focus on how many 3K tasks they're getting. How many tasks are they getting that are worth a lot of points? That's not how this works. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not how this is going to work. Every single week, what you're going for is you're going for the best possible possibilities to open up, to block, to whatever, so that you can run between an 1800 and a 2K average. If you go above a 2K average, then phenomenal. If you don't, then not, you know, whatever. If you win, great. But... That's the ballpark you want to aim for. Why does it matter to people if they had 10 3,000 point tasks in a row and then get nothing but 1,000 point tasks and now they're right there on their 2K average? I don't know why it matters, but for whatever reason, some people really focus on it. Well, you're going to have a hard time then because the game is weird like that. It's going to level you out. It's not, you're not going to always get 3,000 point tasks. You're going to get them here and there. Okay? You're, you're going to fall down on your average and you're going to be like, oh my God, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And then all of a sudden you get a 3K task and you're like, finally. And you think, cool, awesome. The game's doing what I want it to do now. It's going to start giving me those tasks and I can bring my average up. Then it, you do another one and it gives you like maybe a 2200 or something. And you're like, okay, not so bad. So far, so good. And then you get on to the third one and then you're like, oh, now I'm back at this bullshit again. But not once did you go and look at your average and notice something. Well, you're back up to your 2K average now. Maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, you know, fluctuating between 200 points higher or 200 points lower, saying you're picking your assignments correctly. So now you're back on this shit assignment pr thing again. Now you're like, oh man, why isn't it doing what I want it to? And then you end the week saying that you chose all your tasks correctly. You end the week with a 2K average and you won. But for whatever reason, you feel defeated. You feel you didn't do your best. Why? Because you didn't get those high point tasks because that's what you think the mission is. That's not the mission. The mission is to win, to aim for a 2K average and to pick your tasks correctly. That is the mission, okay? to finish on time. It does not matter at all if you picked every right choice, if you finished 18 out of 60 assignments this week. Why does that matter? Doesn't matter. You just spent, now you just, honestly, if anything, you should be more mad at yourself because you just wasted your whole week away. You only got 18 tasks done, okay? You wasted cash, you wasted time, you didn't win. Not if you only did 18 tasks, unless you are in, I don't know, in with total idiots, I guess, if they're not putting up any points. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Most people, even at that point, would put up something. Quick, fast, easy points. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, if you're sitting there in Mega and you're able to win by only doing 18 tasks, shit, I don't know why I'm even talking. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's some, there's got to be a leaderboard out there that's really bad. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's been leaderboards out there at the end of the, the contest where they're that bad. But the majority of them, you got to put it in the effort. You, you really got to. And what other people don't understand, and this is something I've been really studying for a very long time, and I've been talking to CPT and other people about this. And I know this because I see a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people. I see a lot of their lists. And almost all of their lists look the same. Okay? 
So it, it just it cracks me up when I see people and they're like, oh my God, I'm having such a bad time. My tasks are terrible. I'm getting so abused. And oh, this person's like, oh yeah, you know, I've got a 3K VU. And they're like, oh, lucky you. I'm just getting screwed over here. And it's like, then this person with the 3K VU starts messaging me. Oh my God, I'm getting so screwed. And then it's literally like a mirroring effect. Okay, I've got two people messaging me. This person sends me five tasks that are shit. This person sends me five tasks that are good. And then it flip flops and they're almost the exact same list, just getting sent backwards. Now this person's like, oh my God, I'm getting shit. And they're the same points value, the same type of task. And I'm like, but they don't talk about it in the chat. They don't see, they don't see what I see. So they're just thinking that this person's got nothing but good tasks going on. That's all they think. The last thing that they heard that person say was they've been getting nothing but 3K tasks. So they think that they're doing something wrong. No, 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 no. Don't focus on that. Focus on the, the task at hand. Focus on what is the correct choice and how to keep that 2K average, okay? More importantly, how to finish on time. Let's talk about that. Okay, I also pay very close attention to when you send your screenshots in. Now, everybody's on a different time zone, okay? But we all get the same amount of time to complete our tasks, whether it be your daytime is my daytime or nighttime or whatever, doesn't matter. Point is, I know the people that I train, I usually have a pretty good idea when it's their daytime, okay? So I get sent a message yesterday and in eight hours, from one message, one task was done. And it wasn't even a long task. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me this person is gonna have a very hard time finishing on time. That's what this tells me. Now I've trained mm, like eight people like this right up the start. They think they have more time than they actually have. Why, I don't know. Maybe they think, oh, I'll just play all day tomorrow. It'll be okay. No, it doesn't work that way. Because even if you're willing to play all day tomorrow, so what? That doesn't mean you can make the correct choice now. What if you get stuck up on a task that requires production? Now what? Well, now you have a problem because now you gotta cancel it to get something else to open up, which means you're, your average is gonna drop. What if you get stuck in a loop? Then what do you do? Now you gotta cancel a different task or do a different task. What if you can't do that task? Now, next thing you know, just, just one little loop, one bad loop can send your average right down the shitter, okay? And once you fall down to like a 1400, 1200 average, how are you ever gonna get that back? You know what I mean? You can't make that many mistakes and expect, there, there becomes a point where well, even one mistake can cost you your whole fucking week. I'm serious. When I would play calm competitively, I always knew when I fucked up, always. Now, granted, I'm a higher level player. The, the competition is, oh my God, it's way hard up where I'm at, okay? The, it, the choices get unbearable because there's so many different choices. You know, I've got tasks that you guys don't have. I have things that are much harder to complete than you guys, you know, have to do like regionals and, when I get an Epic, it's not like, oh, you know, I have 10 items unlocked in 600 storage and, and Missy helping me. It's like, uh, I got 300 fucking items unlocked. I've got two, you know, 400 storage that I can actually utilize. And I'm sitting over here like, do I want to spend $800,000 on an Epic right now? Oh boy, now I get a regional coins task. That's going to cost me $120 in cash somehow. Like, really? That's what it's like for a high level player. It ends up costing you more than what you get out of it, literally. That's not even a joke. Like when people say, oh, it cost me just as much gas to get there, but really they have a half tank by the time they get home. No, I mean, it really does cost more than what you get out of it, literally. And some weeks are worse than others, of course, you know, it just depends. But the point is, is you guys have a real opportunity here to bank in on some resources that are not going to be 
available to you as easily later, okay? This is the time now to shine, in a sense. This is the time where you want to really amp up your game, bank on this. Wait, wait, listen, okay? Do you know what I would give to be able to be in the position that most of you guys are in? Take the knowledge that I have, play the contest each week at the level that you guys can, and win every week. Every week, you guys have the opportunity to win 2,000 cash and 250 platinum keys. CPT has grown such accustomed to it that he doesn't even realize how good he has it anymore. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, just another 2,000 cash for me, a pocketed for me. Like, dude, if I want 2,000 cash, <laughs> I gotta pay money, okay? It would cost me that much to win it if I wanted to. And that's not even, I don't even get the platinum keys. I mean, if I want to line the back of my fucking wall with waterfalls, I'm going to have to hack this bitch because I there ain't no way I'm paying all that money for those. Like, that's how ridiculous it is for high-level players. Now, for low-level players, it's a whole other game. And that's why feeder cities don't fix everything. That's why you can fuck your shit up so bad that you have to restart no matter what your storage is. Okay? Storage, the main reason storage is such a problem is because you're a higher level player. If you never if you never went past level 24, why would storage be, need to be that high? It really wouldn't need to be that high. And if it does need to be that high, if anybody here feels that they need 800 storage for a level 24 player, how the hell are you ever going to make it when you unlock three times the items? Huh? If you can't make it now, if you can't manage to juggle shit and make it work now. How are you going to make it work when you have 10 times the items unlocked? Plus regionals. Yeah. It's going to suck. Big time suck. Okay? So, what do you need to do to finish your tasks on time? So that you can bank in on these resources. So that you don't have to level up and be screwed like the rest of us. That's why this is so important. What you got to do is you got to be on top of your shit, okay? You got to, when you open up your game, you're getting, you're, it's to get shit done. It's not to dink around and, and lollygag over here and, oh, I'm going to go mosey on over here and stroll by and look at the Sims and then I'll come over here and maybe I'll fill this shop and, oh, looky there, I do have a task I need to do. Oh, maybe I'll message Missy in, in eight hours and see what I should do next. No, 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 no. You're opening up your list. You're like, all right, this is what I got. I got this prepped, this prepped, this prepped. This is going. All these shops got 10 items going. What do I need to get this, this, and this done? This is done in four hours. I'm going to cash in on that in two. I'll be back in five. That is what you're doing. That's how you play the contest. You don't play the contest like, oh, I'll be back after laundry and three kids and six dogs and I'll open my game and I'll be like, I'll collect an ice cream and then I'll, I'll come back and I'll be like, oh yeah, I gotta go feed more kids and do more stuff. And then, oh, looky there, it's been 12 hours and I've done nothing today. You can't win like that. If you don't have time for it, you don't have time for it, but you can't win like that, okay? I'm just being honest. Do I know that people have a life? Oh, absolutely. Do I know how consuming SimCity is? Absolutely. That is why I tell people, if you are not able to be committed to this, don't play calm competitively. It's too time consuming. Okay? Why do you think you pay for the flights? Why do you think that you speed stuff up with tokens? Because you have to. Do you honestly think that you can finish 60 tasks in five days time by waiting three days for a flight? How in the hell would you, anybody ever do that? Please explain. What about that candy cane task? Make 17 candy canes at three hours a piece. Come on. Look at how many hours the contest mayors even is. Calculate that up for a minute. How are you gonna spend half the contest making, doing one, one production assignment? You can't. This is why people pay the money to bring those flights back. This is why we don't touch certain tasks. 
this is why we increase the prob probability or possibility, whatever you want to call it, of bringing up the opportunity of getting this task over that task. Okay, this morning, screenshot came in from one guy for a guy in comm training. He had chems for 30 points higher than he had minerals for, and he thought that the choice was chems. Why? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around the logic here. Okay, what? This is the process. Here's the process. Why in... Give me one reason why you would pick chems over minerals. Okay, the points are 30 points higher. That's the only benefit, is that it's 30 whopping points higher. But, what do we know about chems versus minerals? Okay, let's, let's start comparing the two. They're both factory tasks, so they can't be sped up on a token. Okay, so there's that. So what do we know about that for chems? Well, that means how many hours? Two versus 30 minutes. Why would you pick chemicals over minerals over 30 points difference when they're an hour and a half longer? Why? That's foolish. Completely foolish, right? That doesn't even make sense. Then what do you do when you do that? If you were to pick chemicals over minerals, what have you just done to your list? What is the repercussion of said action? Now you have the possibility of that chemicals task coming back for a, a, an additional time. Possibly sitting at a higher points value like 1600, so still below the 2K average line, but just enough to fuck your day up, right? Yeah. So really, all you've done is screwed yourself up by doing the chemicals. So what is the secret to picking your tasks? After I started watching these people in the comm training course and realizing how, they're, first off, they're going way too slow. I had to speed them up, okay? I have another guy in my group. He, as of last night, he had 42 tasks left. Yeah, here we are. We've got now, what? a day and 21 hours left of the contest. And he's got more than three quarters of his assignments left, plus tickets. How in the hell is he gonna finish on time? The whole week's wasted. Now, the best thing that he can do for himself is try to get quick, fast, easy points, as many as he can to see if he can put points higher than the guy below him. He could still win, but it's not an ideal way to play. Because he waited way too long. He took way too long. And people always think I'm harping on him and I'm being so mean to him because I'm telling them how long they're taking. Like, come on, guys, come on. It's, I'm serious, so, you know? It doesn't matter what choice is right or wrong if you don't finish on time. It all has to be equally important. That's the point, right? So it's not... Like, oh, I learned how to pick my task correctly. All of a sudden, then I'm going to be able to play on time. No, because you're not doing the things you need to do to finish on time. It has nothing to do with you finishing your tasks on time when it comes to picking your assignments. That's not what's keeping you from moving quickly here. What's keeping you from moving quickly is the way you're playing. You're not on top of it. You're not making calm a priority. You're, you, you think you are but you're not really. When, when I tell you, when I look at CPT's list, when he sends me his screenshots, okay, he tells me what he's done so far. He says, look, this is my list. I've got this prepped, this going, this ready for pickup if it needs to be done. If, I looking, if I'm looking at his list and there's three production tasks there, I know that he's got, if they're able to be, you know, ready for pickup, that he's got them ready. That's what I know. But when I'm looking at somebody in comm training, I know they haven't even started it because they didn't know if they should or not. Well, <laughs> it ain't going anywhere. If it isn't going anywhere, then multitasking would probably be your best option, right? So the, a good example of this would be this. Let's say that you have a task for feed for 2,300 points and you have it making, okay? It's something you know you have to do. 
And you also have a production task for paint and flour in your list. And you already have this downtime for the feed anyways, where you have to, you have to sit. Do you know how many people don't make paint and flour during this time because they didn't know if they should? That was a huge waste of five hours of your time. You just sat there and did nothing for five hours. You thought you were doing something because you were working on feed. But no, you didn't do anything. Not really. Because now, let's say that feed comes back as a house upgrade. What do you think your next option is probably going to be? Probably the paint you didn't do. Probably the paint you didn't even start looking for the materials for. That you didn't even start making. You probably have nails prepped or something that was quick. Those are big, big mistakes to make. These are the mistakes that you're making by not being able to finish on time. Not, I didn't know what I was doing, so I picked the wrong task. That's not what's causing you not to finish on time. Not prepping your shops, not multitasking, not being on top of your game, not checking your game, being AFK for 10 hours of your daytime. You can't play like that. If you work, you gotta check you're going to have to check your game between work somehow. You're going to have to find a way if you want to play competitively. That's what I'm saying. I'm just being honest. Unless the only people that can finish on time and not give away their whole week, they don't make the correct choices, but they pay an obscene amount of money. Okay? They're the people, they jump on, they get all their tasks done in two days because they pay out the ass to get their tasks done. They don't pick the tasks correctly, and they, they put up... They're usually the people that are on your leaderboard that zoom to the top and then slowly get beat down, okay? They, they, they sit at the top of the leaderboard for the first two days of the contest, maybe three days. Then they slowly watch their score drop and they save a couple of tickets. So then they like, oh, should I test them? And then they add a couple of tickets, hoping, hoping that it's enough. And then those people are usually the people that end up in like eighth, 12th place at the end of the week, okay? Normally, saying that they're, especially if they're above level 30, that's definitely what's going on, okay? Now, you don't want to be one of those people. You want to be able to move at the right pace and make the right choice. You don't want to be moving too quickly to the point where you're ending with like a 1500 average, but you have two extra days left, plus you spent double the re... What does that matter? Would you rather spend you know, 300 cash or, you know, 1,500 cash this week on the contest. I'd rather spend the 300 if possible, okay? So that's my point. Now, the secret to picking the tasks, okay, because we got to get on with this, is people are not looking at all possibilities, and I've said this so many times, but I'm gonna, trying to figure out a way to say it in a different manner. So yesterday I asked the girl that I'm training, I said, tell me why we chose what we just chose. And I knew what her answer was going to be because I knew what she was thinking. Of. I knew what was important to her. I was trying to make a point. I knew that she was going to come back and tell me that the reason we chose what we did was because of points. Somehow, some way, she was going to focus on the points. And that's exactly what she did. She said, well, we chose it because we're trying to get better points bigger points. I got to get more points. Like that's all she cares about. And I'm like, no, that's not at all why we chose it. I mean, sure. That's the ultimate, you know, goal in a sense. Yes. Is to get better assignments, but that's not why we picked it. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for an analysis. Why we chose that task at this time under these circumstances. What, what took place to make that happen? I was looking for a paragraph. I was looking for her to come back to me and say, well, because of this, we couldn't do this. So we did that, which led to this, which is why we're doing this. That's what I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear, I wanted bigger points. That's why we, do, that's why we did it. That doesn't even make sense. So explain to me how, if you were training somebody and you said, you're going to pick this task over that task and the person says, okay, can you tell me why we're picking this over that? And you say, because you got to get better points. How does this lead to better points? Why are you picking this? Right? Why, why this task and not this task? 
Why, why didn't you pick that task? Why didn't that task lead to better points? Why this one? You didn't know, because that's not what was important to you. You didn't want to really see everything, okay? So every single time that somebody asks me for help, they, and that usually, they don't look at anything that I've told them. How many people here are struggling in the contest, have watched all my calm videos, and they don't know what to do because when they look at the list, they don't even know what to look for or what to look at. Maybe there's just so many things that all they look at is premium and high points. That's about all anybody looks at. Most people, even after watching my videos, still do not understand what reverse rotation is. They don't understand what a rotation is. It's kind of like a fake it till you make it, I think I can pick the highest task kind of thing. No, you have to know, you can't half-ass it. Okay, so if you don't know what a reverse rotation is, that's where the problem is. Because you're not paying enough attention to what I'm saying. So let's go through this, okay? I tell people, when I put them through comm training, most of the time, people get it and they start, they start to really understand because what ends up happening is they send in their list and then usually what happens is I give them an, a long explanation as to why we chose what we chose. And then eventually, after so many long explanations, they start to see a pattern here. And they're like, okay, I'm starting to get this. But they aren't looking for that explanation themselves. It's almost like they hear it so many times, they're like, okay, this is the process. So in this instance, okay, what we're looking for is, I'm going to cancel this just because, if we're gonna pretend that that's not there. Okay, so in this instance, let's say I'm in Mega. This is my list. What is the best possible option here for me? What should I do? Well, what am I looking for? Well, what's the first thing I'm looking at here? Anybody know? First thing, look at level. What's your city level? How quickly can you get shit done? You know, how many factory tasks do you have or slots? Well, I'm level 99. Okay, so I've got maximum factory slots. Great. So I can do any task that I get, I can do in one round. Great. Okay. Now, I've got yogurt that's on a timer that I can't see. So we're going to pretend that that doesn't exist because we don't know the points value just for the purpose of this. So this is what we got here. How many people picked the, the lawn chairs? Probably quite a few, okay? Uh, that's the incorrect choice. It's close to the correct choice. It would, it would normally be the correct choice. But in this case, in these instances, it is the incorrect choice. Why? Okay, first thing we're gonna look at, we're gonna break it down for a second. We're gonna do a task assessment. We're gonna say, okay, let's get these premiums, non-premiums sorted out here for first off. First and foremost, Productions. We got two productions at the top. What do we know about production? And this is a thought process that should take place every time you look at your list. Okay? I've got fries and cement right there. What do I need to do? Well, I know damn well. It doesn't matter the points. I don't give a shit about the points right now. All I know is right there I've got two production tasks that are sitting there. Okay? In my list, those are rotatable. Those are my rotating tasks. Those are the tasks that I'm going to be doing to open up possibilities of higher premiums. So if I know eventually I'm going to have to bank in on those, would it be pretty intelligent to at least get them going? Probably. So the first thing I would want to do is at least put one fry and one cement down. That's first thing. So at least I've got them making. I don't want to fill my whole shop up just yet because I could do another task and end up with something higher. And now I've got this whole shop full of stuff that I've got to clear out. So you only put down one at a time. That is hence why you would use the yellow arrows, okay? Now, at that point, what you want to initially have is 10 done and one making at all times. That's the whole goal. That's essentially I should already have 10 items making in every one of my shops and then have one item 
that I can kind of rotate out. Now, the fast food shop probably is going to be the one, say, for my level, the one that I don't have to worry about, okay? Because that one's too hard to keep running full time. So that'll be the one that I can click on to rotate around my shops with. So for you high level players, that's what you're going to do. Okay. So I've got my fry down, my one cement down. Those are too low right now. We're, we're looking for a higher number in this instance. So let, let's keep looking. Let's, we got to keep going. Now we've got a 1000 war booster. We never touch that task. Why do we never touch that task? Because it's probably just going to come right back. It's only worth a thousand points. That's all it can ever be worth. And it doesn't come back in multiples that I've ever seen. So it's going to sit there. Okay, for now, it's going to sit there. <clears throat> now we've got 1,760 lawn chairs. Okay, now that's for 11 lawn chairs. Well, we know I got gold tokens because of my city level. But the question is, do I have 22 planks to start that? Don't know. Got to go check, right? So I need to get that going too. So that's first thing. Go get it. Go get one lawn chair making. All right. Now let's move down the list. Now we've got the deliveries to London for a thousand. Now this one is a premium. It's sitting at a low points value. So it's a possible. It's a possible choice, right? But it's still half the points value of the lawn chairs. So we're not going to pick that over the lawn chairs, would we? No. <clears throat> now we've got the cargo ship for 1800 Now this one is a non-premium task. However, it's sitting at 1800 points. It's not sitting at 1200 or 800 So what do we know about this task? Well, we know that it's sitting at 1800 points and that we can only have so many tasks sitting around 2000 points and we've already got the lawn chair sitting right around 2000. Now we've got the shipment sitting around 2000. Now we've got the oil jug sitting right around 2000. But those two are production. This is a cargo. This one should be able to be done quicker than the production, right? And we're gonna have to do it to get it out of the way because it's holding a points value now. It's not about premium versus non-premium now. It's about points value. It's holding too high of a points value right now. If that was sitting at 1,200 points or lower, then we wouldn't even think of touching it, right? But now that it's at 1,800, now we've got problems. Now we've got to do it. Now let's keep going, because that's more than likely going to be our choice, but we got to keep looking. All right, now we've got a 1360 sugar. Should we start the sugar? Probably not, just yet simply because we have several tasks that we can get done really quick. And if we start the sugar now, I could easily do the shipment and get like a 1700 metal or something. So just yet, we're not going to quite start the sugar just yet because we have so many tasks right here that can be done within an hour, right? Now we've got a 1200 epic. What does this tell me? I need to start figuring out how I'm going to be doing an epic in case, in case my game starts giving me a bunch of non-premiums, low non-premiums, I have to rotate stuff out, okay? That would be a ro that's gonna be one of my rotating assignments. I'm gonna have to be able to do that, probably. It, saying that that's what happens, I'm probably gonna have to be able to do an epic, so I need to start prepping for that. Preparing, I may not have to, but I may have to. The point is, you wanna prep for the assignments that you think you may have to do. Even if you think you might have to do it, you should be prepping for it, okay? Now we've got the monster at a thousand. Well, we're not touching him for the rest of the course of the whole damn bullshit. We're not touching that. So that's out, off, crossed off forever. Okay. Now we got an upgrade Tokyo at 1000. We sure as hell aren't touching that because, well, actually, no, I'm a 99. I could touch that. But in your guys' case, you aren't touching upgrade tasks. Okay. For me, that's a premium sitting there. So yeah, that would be definitely an option. So right now, uh, we need to consider all possibilities before making our selection. Now, which one is the highest, best option for us right now that we can do quickly? Not even not do quickly, even that we can do that would be the correct choice. Well, we would also want to look at how many tasks we have remaining. If I'm sitting here at 
you know, 42 tasks in one day left, it really doesn't matter what I do. I'm screwed. I need to hurry the hell up is what needs to happen. But I have 10 tasks left. So I'm going to do this one. That's the highest, best option. But I went through every damn choice. Now, once we do this, then people say to me, okay, Missy, after I do this, then this is the choice? No. What? Why? You just said blah, 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 blah. After you do that, you get an assignment. Yo, yeah. Right. So how would I know if anything below this is the choice when I don't know what you're going to get after this? None of that matters. Every single person that I've ever trained does that. They say, so after this task, I do this and then this and then that? No, no, and no. You do this task, you see what pops up, and then you go all the way through your whole damn list again and you reevaluate things based off of the pretenses that you have now. That's what you do. Because you know what? Whatever task we chose, I don't know how long it's going to take you. I don't know what's going to be going on in your game by the time you finish it. I don't know what you got going on. For all I know, the stakes have completely changed now. For all I know, you get something great. Let's say I did this and I got a 3K VU. That would be the pretty obvious choice, would it not? Okay, so right there, if I told you, yes, you do this, that would have been the wrong answer, right? So, no, I'm not going to tell you to do so. I don't even know what you're going to get yet. Okay, so... There's that. So let's say that this is our list now. Now what do we do? We've got a 1700 lawn chair and a 1600 oil. Well, oil is just barely less. And it's going to go quicker. And it's going to be easier to obtain the materials for. So I'm probably going to do the oil. Okay. If I had the lawn chairs making during this time and I had all the planks and all that, then I would do the lawn chairs first. Now, the only reason that I picked the oil over the lawn, you're going to have to be making the oil anyway, because you know it's going to have to be done soon anyway. So now you've got all this stuff making, okay? Now you've done this. Oops, I should have done lawn chairs doesn't matter either way it really doesn't matter okay here's an airport task don't know how many points it's worth but let's let's pretend that it's worth 2,000 points what's our next game game plan here well it's 2,000 points and it's premium there's nothing else here that's higher than that that's also premium so that's our obvious choice right okay I'm getting getting the hang of it yet so you're looking at everything. If you're not looking at your entire list like a puzzle, you're never going to get it. If you're only looking for one way that puzzle piece is going to go fit, you're never going to get it. Let's pretend that you have a puzzle on your table. Nothing's put together yet. You're grabbing all different pieces and you're trying them together. You know, you've got 97 million different pieces. Then you're like, you know what? This is stupid. I'm going to do the pieces I know go together. I'm going to get the outline, right? I'm going to get the border done first. Now what? Now we're going to say, okay, let's start picking out the picture. This looks like it goes here. This looks like it goes there, right? Now, how much sense does it make to sit there with a, a 1,000 puzzle piece and just try all different variations of pieces forever? Doesn't make much sense, does it? No. So what you're doing here is you're going through this process it's like a puzzle. It's like, think of it like a crime scene, if you would. You're, you're saying, what do I know about this? How can I implement it here? What changes if I complete this action versus this action, right? So what you're doing is you're saying, okay, fresh eyes, stop. What are we doing here? Why is this important? So if I told you right now, to pick out from these right here, minus this one. Let's just say that. We're going to pretend that none of these exist right now. Okay. None of these exist. This is, your, this is what your choices are here. What is the best possible choice right here? I can tell you right now.
Did anybody think, what did, where'd you start? What, what did you start doing? What was the first thing you thought of when you started looking at this list? Okay, well, first thing you need to do is look at what you have to cross off. Let's start with that. You cross off the booster and you're crossing off the monster. That's fact, okay? We already know you're not gonna pick an epic over a production because why? So you're gonna cross that off because it's only at 1200 especially. So you've got epic crossed off, you've got monster crossed off, and you've got booster crossed off. All right, what else? Now we've got a sugar sitting at 1360. That's technically your highest one in the list. Does that look like the best choice though? What do you need to know to determine if that is the best choice? Well, how much time is left? That's number one. But more importantly, do you want to do it? Do you want to open up the possibility of that damn task coming back again? Do you have sugar already prepped? Is there five days left? Is there two days left? Is there 10 hours left? Who knows? That matters. Point is, I wouldn't want to open up the possibility for just a 1300 point task. So sugar's out, epic's out, monster's out, booster's out. Right now you've got fries, cement, deliveries to London for a thousand, and a Tokyo upgrade. Let's just pretend for the purpose of this that we're not doing upgrades because you guys don't do upgrades. Cross that off. Now what do you got? You've got fries, cement, delivery to London. Which one's the correct choice? Anybody who said London is correct. It's the highest premium. It opens up the best possibility. It can be done the quickest. You should already have the fries and the cement going, right? Now let's say you had to pick between the fries and the cement. And let's say that you had the fries done, but the cement weren't done. What's the correct choice? Not fries. It's still 220 points lower. You're still gonna pick cement. You should have done better. Should have had the cement done first. That's your fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's just how it is. You've had plenty of time to prep this shit. So now you're gonna see what comes up after the London, before you even think about the others, okay? This is the process that needs to take place. You need to really go through and break down what you know about these tasks. Now, when you hear me say in 20 videos, only do mountain tasks in mega, and you're in mega, and you're looking at your list, and mountain is the highest task on your list, there isn't even, it's not even up for debate. It's not even questionable what you should be doing right now. But people are like, should I do Mountain and Mega? You have got to be more on top of it. You have got to pay more attention. You know, you've got to be like, look, this is what I know about this task. That's what you need to do. You need to go through, cross off anything that you know you don't do. That's the starting point, okay? That's always the starting point. Look at what you can and look at what you should and should not do. That's first. Take what you think is possible and break it down and start saying, okay, if I, if, why would I pick this over this? What does this do for me? Okay, but why not pick this over this? What about that over this? And you, and thankfully, normally it's either the answer is so blatantly obvious, like a 3K VU, or you're only really fluctuating between a couple of tasks here. Now let's say that you have no obvious choice, right? What do you do then? What do you do when you're in reverse rotation? What do you do when you open up your list and you have three tasks, three upgrade tasks sitting at 2000 points? That's, you're starting to get problems because now you've got wait, these points values being held by premium tasks that you can't do. That if you cancel, they set you really far back. So they have to be canceled at the right time at the right pace, right? Do you always cancel a 2400 or 3000 point assignment the moment it pops up? No, not always. Sometimes you don't. Okay, last night I had a guy ask me in the game chat, mind you, I've said, I don't know how many times I've said, I cannot tell you the answer, the correct choice of assignment to choose unless I see your entire list, period. I can't do it. 
and I won't do it. Okay? It's I'm not there's no way for me to give you that answer. Now, he asks me between glass and I believe sugar or chems. I can't remember which. It was two factory tasks. Then he tells me he has 42 assignments left. And during this time, I told him, I said, well, I already know that glass is not the correct choice. Okay. If you've got 42 tasks left, half the contest is already over. I already know that a glass task sitting at 1600 points is already automatically out. Why in the hell would you open up the possibility of a five hour task? Why? Why? Well, especially when you have 20 or 42 tasks left. Especially when it's below a 2K average. And I said this. I made it very clear that that was the incorrect choice. I said I couldn't help him with the correct choice until I knew what he needed to do. So what do you think this person did? What do you think they did? They said, okay, how do I contact you? So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to tell this guy what he needs to be doing. In the process of me downloading Telegram, he decides to start glass. I don't know why. I guess he felt that that would be the best option. I guess he felt he knew better than I did. I don't know. Okay, so he starts glass. Now I'm telling him, you got to cancel it. You don't have five hours to waste, dude. In fact, you're pretty screwed right now because you've got 42 tasks plus tickets and you've got a day and 20 hours left. Yeah. Uh, you need to get a move the fuck on if you want to win. Right? Okay. Now, I'm looking at this guy's list. And there's better options. Obvious better options than glass. Now, I'm telling him quick, fast, easy points. You know, stuff like 2,000 repair, 2,000 keys, uh, even coin tasks at this rate. Something just to get some damn points up on the board because you don't have all day to lollygag around. Now, I mean... If you don't have the skill to go through and really, in, you know, you're going to have to think. You have to. You cannot. People to try to simplify everything. That's what we're good at. Okay. That's why we come up with all these wonderful inventions in life. It's always every invention that I've ever seen in my mind is always to make life easier for us. The washing machine, the dishwasher, the car, the it uh, doesn't matter what it is. Somehow, some way. It's to make life easier for us. It's, or be lazier. You know, like the TV remote. To make life easier, right? Okay. The Keurig, for Christ's sake. I mean, really? Okay, whatever. Don't even get me started on that stupid coffee machine, okay? I hate that fucking coffee machine. Now, here we are. And we're, we're humans that we, we adapt to making things easier. We always take the easy route. And you've got something that people are trying to simplify. And they're looking at it going, God, just give me, give me a secret that tells me what task to pick without me having to think. That's what people want. They want me to give them the easy answer that says, hey, you're always going to pick this one. That's all you need to know. Just this one little thing and you'll be okay. Nope, can't do it. Sorry. It's just not that simple. I'm sorry, I can't do that. And that's what people want from me. I can't express how many times I have trained people, talked on videos, answered questions, and I've said all the same things I'm telling you guys right now. Can't tell you how many times I've said all this to the, all of the same people. I can't don't have words and I can't figure out the words in the right order to make people understand. You either get it or you don't get it. You either start really trying or you keep trying to simplify something that you can't simplify. Okay. It is at its most simplified. It doesn't get much more simple than this. Cross off what you don't do. Remember what you were. You have to learn your assignments. 
if you're sitting here and you don't know anything about the assignments, you don't know what points values they are, how if they pop up in multiples, uh, are they factory production? Are they regular production? You know, you're, all you're really looking at here, you're, it's just a process of elimination. You're just going through and saying, okay, this is the best option compared to this, then this compared to that. And now that you've broke it down and you've got it down to three, then you compare those three. And then you say, okay. And then eventually the process gets to the point where it comes natural. It's like learning how to drive a stick shift, okay? It just comes natural. And you, you almost start to autopilot with it. And you just know, just by looking at it, you can just quickly look at it and go, oh, well, right there. That's what you're gonna do. Now, sometimes there's times where the choice is not so obvious, you know? And you've got to really think on it because you've got this really bad list and you're just like, okay, I've got all these assignments. They're all non-premiums. They're all worth low points values. What can I pick here to make something happen? That is when shit gets hard. That is when you're in a reverse rotation. When you're looking at your list, let's say you had like six upgrade tasks, all at like 1800 points or lower. Then you've got a 1K monster, a 1200 VU, a 1200 keys, a 1100 uh, coins, and maybe an 800 epic. Like that's like the worst list ever because you have all these perfect low non-premiums, but you have nothing rotatable, right? You have nothing you can rotate out for premium because you don't want to touch anything that's sitting there. So what do you do? You have to touch, you have to fix them one, you have to pick one of them. Well, you go through the, the list of the ones you know you would never touch, like the monster, because he's a, he's a limited thing. He's only there on a timer. You know that the possibility of him coming back is high. You know that the possibility of him coming back of 2,000 points or higher is slim. And even if he does, he's on a timer, right? Epics, probably not the best choice, um, depending on the situation. So it really, like I said, you're just, you're weighing out options here. You're just sitting there going, okay, what about this? What about that? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? And the reason that there is no this or that answer is because it depends on your game and what's going on in your game. It doesn't just depend on the list. You can have the same list, okay? This is, this is a really good example. Let's say that I get, hand everybody the same list, right? And th it's the same exact variation of tasks, except, hold on. All right, you guys, sorry about that. Okay, so, I mean, you know, what it really comes down to is a balance and just learning what exactly it is to pick at the right time. It's just, you got to stop looking for the simple answer. You got to learn to problem solve, right? Try the best that you can to start at with what I've talked about today and then get down, get it down to the couple of tasks that you think are what you would choose and do the best you can at looking up like what, what you're gonna open up, you know, how much time do you have left? How many points is it worth? Everything is equally as important is what I'm saying. But what I was trying to say before she called is that I could take the same list, the same variation of tasks and have you guys pick from them as to which one is the right choice. But let's say that I scrambled up the time remaining or the city level that would change the answer of the same exact list. That's my point. So let's say I handed one person a list of tasks, same list of tasks that I handed you, except for this person has five days left and you have one day left. Let's say that this person has 42 tasks left, but you have 10 and vice versa and so forth. That is going to change the answer of what you should do. Let's say that uh, this person's average is really, really, really high versus this person's average is really, really low, right? Let's say this person can do upgrades because they don't care about 
camping, but this person can't. You know, everybody's game is different. Where you're at with it is always different. Let's say that this person has an, a shit ton of dozers stocked up and they're in Metro versus this person's in Mega, right? And has no dozers. City League, time remaining, tasks remaining, amount, how many time, you know, how, how long does it take you to clear said task? All of this shit matters. And it's going to change your answer drastically. Doesn't matter the, the combination of tasks that are being thrown at you when you don't take all things into consideration. And that is why it's called setting the scene. That's what that means, right? When I tell you guys to set the scene, that's what you're doing. You're looking at everything. You're saying, okay, this is my game. This is what I got going on, and this is my list. It does nothing for me just to see a list. It's just a list. It means nothing to me. I can't tell you the answer if I don't know anything about who, who it goes to. You know? If you, if, if you were to, to blindside me and hand me a list and say, you can't know the person's league level or time remaining or tasks remaining, I could honestly hand you your, the list back and say that I can't help you. I cannot tell you the correct choice. I can say, based on if they're in Mega, if they're on time, if they're this level, this could be the correct choice, but that's not really fair now, is it? Because now I'm making assumptions that they're in Mega, that they're the, a specific level, that they're on a time frame, that they've got this many tasks left, that they're running a 2K average. I'm making several assumptions that essentially are pointless to make. So that is why it is so important that you pay close attention to everything, okay? Every time. And that is why task assessments change. That is why when you cross something off that you know you're not going to do, notice how that changes throughout the duration of the contest. Notice how you crossed it off maybe two, three tasks ago, but now it's not crossed off again because now it's th the tables have turned. Now there's less time remaining. Now there's more at stake here. Maybe you crossed off a 1200 key task at the beginning of the contest, but maybe it's your best play now. Just depends. You know, you just got to look at everything. So hopefully that helps you guys. I'm going to get this uploaded and uh, yeah, let me know how it works out for you guys. Okay.